Weeks of increasingly violent protests in Hong Kong are taking a growing toll on the city's economy. Economists say the impact of anti-government protests over the past eight weeks is already worse than that of the 2014 Umbrella Movement, which overwhelmed the city's financial district for 79 days. They note that the demonstrations are more spread out across the city and violence is more intense. This morning, protests paralyzed the city's rail services, causing commuter chaos. Commuters in Hong Kong were greeted with chaotic scenes during the early rush hour this morning. That's after anti-government protesters targeted the city's rail network. Subway operator MTR said services were delayed and partially suspended on the island and Kwantung lines. Some said they didn't mind the hassle. For half an hour, half an hour, yeah. Uh, a little bit. But I think it's okay uh, because I think the government should uh, respond to the uh, demand of the citizens. Uh, otherwise, they will not uh, carry out these actions. But tempers did flare after protesters blocked doors to prevent trains from leaving at a station. <laughs> Today's protest follows a demonstration last week at Hong Kong's International Airport. Protesters are becoming more creative in their call on Chief Executive Carrie Lam's government to heed their demands. What began as a series of protests against the extradition bill, which would allow people to be sent to mainland China for trial, has now evolved into a wider backlash against the city's government. As Hong Kong continues to grapple with increasingly violent and drawn-out protests, police officers are demanding that Chief Secretary Matthew Chung clarify what he meant when he apologized for the force's response to the Yunlong attacks. Mr. Chung is Hong Kong's second in command, and he made the apology after dozens were injured by a mob at Yunlong Railway Station on the 21st of July. The police had apparently taken more than half an hour to respond to the attacks. Mr. Chung's remarks provoked fierce backlash from police officers who were upset that they were not consulted before the apology was issued. Many also felt that their efforts had been written off. Well, for more, let's head to um, Hong Kong and speak to our correspondent, Roland Lim. Roland, do the police want Mr. Chung to rescind his apology? I mean, what are they expecting? Well, you know, what's in an apology? Well, it's critically important if you are the Hong Kong police that's been towing at the government line and trying to preserve law and order in the city and bearing the brunt, of course, of the angry protesters uh, in Hong Kong in recent weeks. Uh, there's been numerous criticisms, of course, over excessive use of force uh, with their clashes with protesters week in, week out. And that's why the, a meeting was held between uh, the city's number two, uh, Matthew Cheung, uh, and the four major groups representing nearly all of the police force, the superintendents, Association, uh, the Police Inspectors Association, Overseas Inspectors, as well as Junior Officers Association. Um, they uh, were calling on, they wanted really for the chief, uh, the chief secretary to clarify that the force was not absolutely apologizing to the public over the handling of the attacks uh, of the uh, Yunlong MTR on July 21st. Now, Chief Secretary Becky Chong, as you said, last Friday said that the police response to that mob violence in Yunlong uh, put dozens in hospital had, quote, fallen short uh, of people's expectations. That was his so-called apology. Uh, his office later claimed that uh, Mr. Chung was only apologizing for the administration's handling of that extradition bill and not saying sorry on behalf of the police. Well, the police force, uh, of course, under heavy fire from from the public and protesters for not responding quicker to the calls for help, uh, scores of thugs dressed in white, attacking commuters and journalists uh, in, at, at the Yunlo metro station, 45 people hospitalized. Um, so after his apology, a number of officers, as you say, taken to the internet to criticize the chief secretary's comments, uh, with some even calling uh, for his rec uh, resignation. So on Tuesday, uh, the chairman of the Police Superintendents Association, Ronnie Chan, says that while Mr. Cheung is entitled to state his views, he can 
cannot represent the police force. Uh, the police associations are also calling for Cheung to clarify to the public once again his earlier remarks. Uh, it's not clear at this stage whether he will publicly do so, but his office did issue a statement uh, this afternoon saying that after the meeting, he had frank exchanges with the officers and he reiterated his absolute support and recognition uh, for the work of the police force to date. Yeah, so, Roland, what's then the impact of this rift between the police and the government? Yeah, one thing that the chairman of the Police Superintendents Association, Ronnie Chan, was clear to point out, though, that regardless of what was said or what was meant, uh, the police force and the government are aligned. So both sides, uh, the administration and the police force, uh, are putting up a united front. But of course, Mr. Cheung's uh, gaffe really is in sharp contrast to the central government's assessment uh, of the role of the Hong Kong police uh, has played so far. Uh, remember, in an unprecedented briefing by the State Council's Hong Kong Macau Affairs Office on Monday, the central government said that it supports the Hong Kong police resolutely uh, to strictly enforce law in the city and to support relevant departments and authorities to punish uh, these violent lawbreakers, they say, in accordance with the law. So in fact, uh, the vice president of Beijing's uh, top think tank in Hong Kong, Laos Yukai, says that the central government speaking out on the ongoing crisis yesterday was really aimed at boosting the morale uh, of the police force here. Lao says that Beijing views the police as having an important role keeping things under control, uh, and the central government still thinks that the situation in Hong Kong is controllable uh, and be able to, and the, the Hong Kong police will be able to handle the situation. All right, many thanks for that update. Roland Lim speaking to us from Hong Kong.